Hello everyone, Helen here. Thanks for coming to join me. Uh, I hope you're doing all right. Um, I'd like to say a big welcome if you're new. Uh, had a few new subscribers recently, so that's lovely. So if you don't know me well yet, uh, I live in Durham in the northeast of England and I work as a piano teacher from home part of my time and the rest of the time I make things, knit, knit, crochet, sew, bake, uh, and go for walks and go off travelling. So uh, my podcast is about all of those things that I love doing and love sharing with you. So today, uh, well, I couldn't really think what to call it, so I just called it, ta-da, <laughs> because I've finished one big project. So really, it's going to be a kind of a roundup of things that I've finished making recently. And uh, yes, so and one of them is a big project that I started months ago. I did start it this year. It's not that long a project, but most of the things that I make are small projects. And I think I've often said that I find that very satisfying to, you know, just to finish something in a, in a short amount of time in a few days or something like that. Um, but uh, I, I don't often do big projects. I haven't really made myself a uh, clothing very often at all. So this big project is a jumper that I started knitting uh, at, way back in March and I have to say it is such a satisfying feeling to have finished it. So my idea that I, little projects are more satisfying than big projects, I've changed my mind. I've decided this is so satisfying. So here it is. It's my vanilla sweater and it's all finished. And uh, yeah, so I thought rather than put it on now where you can't really see while I'm busy sitting down, I'll just show you some photos. And I am so, so pleased. Well, I'm, a, I'm pleased with everything about it. Um, I, I love the fit and I love the neck. I love the, the pattern, how the pattern looks with this yarn. Uh, so it's, uh, West Yorkshire Spinners, Shetland, Croft, and it's iron weight, I think. Yeah, iron weight yarn. I knit it on five millimeter needles. And yeah, I mean, it fits, it fits perfectly. Uh, the only thing I'd say is that uh, the sleeves are a bit too long, except I think they're fine the, the way they are. Um, I did actually make the sleeves, uh, I think, five or six centimetres shorter than it said in the pattern because I know I've got short arms and so I tried to work out uh, how long I need the, needed the sleeves to be uh, but I still, you know, I, I, obviously they weren't short enough. It was because I wasn't quite sure um, how to work out where I would be sewing the arms into the body because it's just, it's not a raglan but a, kind of a square on, I don't know what you call those kind of, yeah, square. Is it called setting? I'm not sure. Anyway, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I think when when it's cold weather and you're wearing a jumper that sort of comes over and almost covers your fingers, that's going to be nice and cosy, isn't it? So yeah, and that is just going to be such a warm, cosy jumper. I've already been wearing it actually, but and oh so cozy yeah I, i'm really really proud of myself for keeping on with it and finally it's finished and i did say when i started it i didn't mind how long it took but that i hoped it would be ready for the colder weather and our colder weather hasn't really arrived yet so it's definitely ready yeah so that is my one big project that is now finished uh I had another project that I've shown you many times in the process and that's just another pair of socks. It's these simple skip socks and uh, yeah, lo lovely pattern. So most of the time I do just do plain socks because I'm using, you know, self-striping yarn. that I think it looks nice just as a plain stocking stitch kind of sock. But I do love this little pattern in here that's like a little twisted stitch and, um, you know, running down, running down the length. So yeah, those will be going into my gifting box for Christmas. So some lucky person will be getting those. 
And what else have I got? Right, well, I've got two gnomes to show you. So first of all, if you follow me on Instagram, where I'm at Mousy Makes Pod, then you will have seen the uh, October gnome. So this little one here. And I, I decided uh, I really just needed to knit him in some autumn colours. And But when I finished him, I, I didn't really, I wasn't so keen. There was kind of, it lacked something. So uh, I then decided to crochet some tiny little leaves and stick them on his hat. And then I thought it might look quite nice if he was holding some leaves as well. And uh, so I, I, that made all the difference. So yeah, I love him now. Really good. And it's the usual pattern that I use, Never Not Gnoming by Sarah Shearer. And oh, in case you don't know, he's my October gnome because Sarah Shearer is running a, um, a kind of a, a gnome knit along all year to knit one gnome per year. I have to say most of my gnomes have been this same pattern, but I have tried uh, a couple of others. Um, I think at the end of this year or beginning of next year, I'll have to show you all 12 gnomes together. So yeah, anyway, so that's my October gnome uh, and, you know, just knitted out of uh, leftover DK yarn. So yeah, so that's, that's him. And then I have also completed my November gnome. So here he is. And I think I must have started making him on a really, really grey, misty day uh, because I just decided that in, in the November gnome needed to be all shades of grey. <laughs> um, so again, it's just a few leftovers. I'm not not even sure what they all are. Uh, this, this was a kind of a tweedy one that I used for his hat. And I think this, for his beard, it was a bit of Stylecraft Special DK, but just in that kind of mottled colour. And I decided that November did need a little bit of sparkle. So he's got some stripes in his body that are using sparkly yarn. But I rather like him. And uh, I took him out on a really, really misty day to try and get some photos that gave the atmosphere of a sort of foggy November. So, yeah, anyway, so those, those are my two gnomes. And... Another little character that I've made, that I've finished, I made really quickly, and I'm blaming uh, Jeanette from Crafty Claire Creations for this because she told me that I had, on her last podcast, she told me that, that we had to go and have a look on the Toft website um, uh, because there's loads of really good kits there. So I did as I was told. <laughs> um, and I bought a kit, and I bought a kit to make a little fairy a little fairy doll and you, you could choose uh, which colours you wanted to do, have in your kit so you could choose the hair colour and the skin colour and the dress colour and although I was thinking that it would be nice to have to be making a Christmas fairy for some reason I was drawn to a pink dress uh, but I, I don't really I don't really think she looks very Christmassy now but uh, that'll just be an excuse to make another one the patterns, the Toff patterns, are given a number as to how easy or hard they are. And this one was a two and easy. I don't know what one is. Is that very easy or beginner or something? Um, so, uh, and a lovely pattern to to work from. I, I would, I think if I had been a pattern tester, I might have suggested one or two extra things because I think if you were fairly new to crocheting, there's certain things that you might not realise if you're not experienced in making little toys like this. Um, for example, it didn't say at any point uh, when you should stuff, start stuffing <laughs> your, the, you know, the things that you were make, the parts that you were making. Um, uh, and I think, you know, it would, would be helpful to put that in. But that, really, they're, they're fine. It's not really a criticism. And... Uh, so yeah, so she's a cute little, cute little fairy um, who might go to another home, but uh, we'll, we'll see. And uh, yeah, I and I really enjoyed using the toft yarn. I haven't really used it. I'm not even sure if I have used toft yarn before. Uh, that was their DK, and it's lovely and soft, but very nice to crochet with. It really is. 
lovely. I thought with the really visible twist in it, it might be a bit kind of splitty, but, but it wasn't at all. It's lovely and the toy itself feels really nice and soft. So yeah, so lovely. Okay then. Uh, right, I think that is all of my finished projects and I'm going to just talk about a couple of projects that I've, uh, I'm in the process of making. Now, this project uh, is from a kit that I bought earlier this year when I went to visit the lovely yarn shop Lucy Locketland for the first time. So I'd come across Lucy Locketland probably on Instagram in the first place, but, uh, you know, I'd bought some things from her um, and then had this exciting visit to her shop and to, to meet Lucy which is really really lovely uh, and it is a fantastic shop uh, it's got so much it packed in to, to the space there anyway I bought this hot water bottle cover uh, kit which uses Shetland spin drift yarn and uh, it, it's, it's brilliant it's a pattern that Lucy has written and um, yeah, and it's it's been excellent. Uh, you can see that I have finished the body of the hot water bottle cover. By the way, uh, this is actually for me because my hot water bottle that I use has got a cover on it that, oh, well, somebody gave it to me years ago. I don't know, maybe even 30 years ago. And it's the cover is very, very thin now. And I've been meaning to make a, another cover for it for ages. So when I've seen this kit in Lucy Locket Land, I thought, well, right, that I'll have to do that and make that. It does look a bit long and thin at the moment, but uh, in, the, in the pattern, uh, Lucy reassures you that once it's blocked, it will fit your hot water bottle cover. So I've just got the neck to do now. And um, I, it's going to take a lot of... Uh, Yes, a lot of commitment, I think, shall we say, to do the neck because you actually have to do 50 rounds. Well, I've done 10 rounds. I need to do 50 more rounds uh, of this two by two rib because it folds over as well. And uh, yeah, so that's that, that's going to take me a, a probably longer than this because this is fun and addictive and I just couldn't put it down, basically. But this is going to be, yeah, maybe a couple of rows a day. And they're very thin needles as well, 2.25 um, millimetre needles. But I can't wait to have that on my hot water bottle cover. It's going to be so lovely. Gnomes and gnomes and mushrooms, just perfect. So, yeah, so when um, a lovely WI friend of mine, also called Helen, uh, asked me recently, would, would I like to go on another visit to Lucy Lockett Land? Oh, yes, please. And uh, so so we've we've been this week and along with another nice uh, WI friend. Uh, so the three of us went on an outing and oh, it's just so nice. You, you walk into Lucy's shop and it's just like, stepping into somebody's home in a way and when we were chatting to her in fact she was saying there was a lovely picture of an old lady up high up on the wall and we asked who she, who that was and it was her granny and I, so and she was explaining that the ethos of her shop is really that you that you do you walking into somebody's cozy home so some of the displays are on old dresses and things and in the back half of the shop there's a big wooden table where you can go to knit and natter groups and do workshops and things so it's all sorts goes on there it's really lovely um and of course you know i i didn't go there with the intention of being restrained so i just decided i would buy whatever whatever took my fancy and um uh, but first of all anyway i thought in case you didn't see the last time i went or um you just like a like a little visit to a lovely yarn shop. Uh, here's here's a little kind of look around as uh, some things in Lucy's shop.
yeah so isn't it lovely it's such a lovely shop and there's such a huge choice of uh, kits that you can buy um, for you know all, all the things you saw there hot water bottle covers and mitts and hats in fact I didn't I didn't uh, video everything so uh, but you can see what she uh, has on sale uh, on her website as well so you could go and have a look at that so I did go with a little list because um, I needed some I needed topping up some colours of my Scapiers stone wash that I use for quite a few of the toys that I make nowadays. Now I've discovered what lovely yarn it is. Um, so I had a little list of colours that I wanted and I had a little list of colours of Shetland Spindrift that I needed as well because I am determined to make some more knitted Christmas crackers <laughs> before Christmas. Mm, I don't know if they'll get I'll get enough done, but never mind. Uh, uh, but I also treated myself to a kit, another kit. Uh, this time um, and it comes in this lovely little suitcase and I think I know what I'm going to use this suitcase for. I think this is going to be for Pearl and Dean's clothes, well mainly Pearl, Pearl the doll, who if you don't haven't seen any of those yet she lives in the camper van, she's a crochet doll I made for the camper van. Yeah so I bought this kit and I'm going to make a little reindeer with a Christmas jumper which I forgot to take a photo of it in Lucy's shop and the pattern that you get with the kit actually has a jumper in it with a star on it but um, the designer Julie Williams so this is a little cotton rabbits pattern if you've heard of those uh, Julie Williams also sells separate jumper patterns and she did some Christmas jumpers that would fit her little characters here so I have a pattern for that as well and the yarn for that and I couldn't wait to get started on it so so far I have got a head a reindeer's head so that's I, I love it already and I decided to do the complete head at the eyes and things because I don't know I it's not really nice having the head sitting there without any eyes on so I can't wait to I can't wait to finish him and make his Christmas jumper so I'll definitely show you uh, when when that's all finished so yeah so it, you, you get this kit you, when you buy kits um, you can you can have just them in a cardboard box you don't have to have a suitcase but that's a, an extra special treat one that one was to have a suitcase and so you get all of the yarn that you need and more there's there's always in, in my experience there's always been leftovers and then you get a whole lot of stuffing as well and uh, and of course yeah the patterns come with it as well so yeah so there's going to be a, a new little new little character with all of my Christmas toys and things when I put all of those out. So oh, right I, that's all of my projects either finished or on the go. I've got one or two others waiting but I'll tell you about them another time. Uh, now I did say that I would show you what the prizes were for the giveaway that I did a few episodes ago for my 100th podcast. Um, so I'll just, just show you them here. So uh, one of the prizes was uh, the two of the little mice that I made, which I, I think that was earlier this year. I can't remember, I can't actually remember when I made them. I, I, I love them anyway, and with their little knitted jumpers and things. I think they came in a kit as well, actually, not from Lucy Locketland, but um, that, yeah. So so that one of the prize well, that was one of the prizes, and then another prize was one of the the um one of the characters that i made for the enchanted forest story and also uh, a mole that i knitted from a um cynthia valet pattern who also designed the tutu bears that i've made a few of <laughs> so yeah so those prizes went to the lucky winners I, I, actually the one of the people who was a winner uh called kim hasn't been in touch so I, I, have, I have a prize waiting for for you Kim if you're watching but uh, you need to let me know uh, if you would like me to send send the gift to you uh, yeah so um, I think that is all I'm going to tell you today uh, I'm just going to take you on a little walk now when I was out recently uh, it, we had some really really windy weather 
and I really loved my walk because it wasn't cold wind it was quite a mild wind it was lovely being out in it I don't usually like the wind but it was rather a nice wind that day the thing that really got my attention on my walk uh, on that day was that the leaves were just falling there was just, there was masses of leaves all falling from the leaf well, from the trees uh, being obviously blown off by the wind it was just like it was raining leaves although it still is surprisingly difficult to catch that on you know on camera <laughs> And and I'm, I'm getting down there on near the path, waiting for all the leaves to swirl around. They seem to stop swirling every time my uh, camera gets near them. But anyway, I did catch uh, one or two things, and I've, so I've paired up my video with with um, a poem that you might have heard of before, which is which is all about November and the wind wind blowing the leaves and things. So I hope you're going to enjoy this. I think that's me for today so all I shall say is to take care of yourself keep nice and busy and I'll be back again very soon okay then bye